Welcome to the tutorial series about M Sound Factory, most likely our last instrument and potentially the most powerful instrument ever made. In this first lesson, I'm going to show you what M Sound Factory is, how to install it, and how to use it in your music. The tutorial is perhaps a bit long, but it will let you use M Sound Factory much more efficiently in your music. In the forthcoming tutorials, we will dig deeper into more creative stuff and sound design. So what is M Sound Factory? It's a virtual instrument, but no ordinary one. It is modular and features everything from sampling to synthesis. And what it doesn't have yet, we'll probably have in the future, because instead of developing new instruments like everyone else, we focus only on M Sound Factory. The idea is to make the ultimate instrument you can use for everything, so no more choosing from dozens of instruments you had to buy separately. A single instrument that does it all. It may certainly take time to get all the sounds ready, but the potential is immense. And with free for life updates, it's a no brainer. M Sound Factory comes in three editions and all of them are installed the exact same way. The full M Sound Factory lets you access all of the factory instruments and the edit view where the actual modular sound design happens. But if you're a musician with no interest in creating your own sounds, the cheap M Sound Factory LE which doesn't allow accessing the edit screen, may be a better option. Finally, if you don't want to pay anything, just let M Sound Factory expire after the 15 day trial and it will turn into M Sound Factory Player, which is free and allows access to only a few instruments, including the Monastery Grand and third party instruments you can get from other companies. Let's get straight to the installation. First, visit meldaproduction.com. Click download and get the newest version of M Audio plugins depending upon your operating system. Run the installer. I'd recommend keeping everything default. When you get to the plugin selection page, don't forget to choose M Sound Factory. I'd also recommend enabling M Free FX Bundle or even better, install all of the plugins. There are some true gems and you can have all of it, including a full M Sound Factory edition for 49 euro per month using our subscribe to own program. Let the installer do the magic and then just run your door, which should immediately notice the installed plugins. If not, please check the plugin paths you have configured in your door. Open M Sound Factory. See the shiny red button in the title? It lets you know that you need to install the factory content if you intend to use the factory sounds. So just click it. It opens the M Downloader, a utility which lets you automatically download and install all relevant stuff. First, check the paths down there. The first one defines where you want to download the products. If you already have the products downloaded, for example from an installation on another computer, select their location. The products will then need to be installed. The second path defines where to install the M Drummer data content, preferably on an SSD drive. And the third path defines where you want M Sound Factory samples to be installed. Again, SSD is preferred. Did I mention that you can use all the drum sounds from our mighty M Drummer inside it? Yes, that's right. And what to install? Well, you can install all of it, but at least the two essentials products are needed. A Monastery Grand is definitely a good idea too. It's free after all. The downloader will do all the heavy lifting and you can close it at any time. Next time you run it, it will continue wherever it stopped. You can run it using the green button again, but also using the big download and install instruments button on the left, or by clicking the menu button and selecting download and install products. You can start exploring M Sound Factory already. Just note that from time to time, you may run into an error message if you try to load an instrument which doesn't have samples installed yet. On the left, there's the instrument browser. An instrument is like a dedicated plugin. It has controls and its own presets. So let's click a few.
Next to each instrument, there's a number indicating number of presets it features, and the folders have a count of all of them too. And as you can see, there's already nearly 3,000 sounds at the time I'm making this video. Whenever you load an instrument, its name is in the title, and next to it, there's the preset button. You can also select next, previous, or a random preset using the buttons next to it. The preset button itself opens a window with a folder structure of the presets and it even lets you access the online preset exchange, our cloud system from which you can download presets made by others and upload your own. But what if you're looking for inspiration? There's a better way than browsing the instruments. Click the random button below the instrument list. It will load a random instrument and its random preset. You can just keep clicking it until you find a sound you like. You can use the tags above the instrument list or the folder tree to search more effectively. Just know that say, synth instruments may also be pads. These can be very versatile. What may be one of the biggest interest are the features on the right. Let's mention the most important ones. MPE feature is enabled only for instruments which support the modern 3D controllers properly. Low CPU gets handy if your computer is running out of resources and you only want instruments which don't require too much CPU. Custom GUI feature is enabled only for the instruments which have the sexy graphical interface. You can actually disable that if you don't like it by the way. Click menu and select disable custom GUI. If you don't need the tags, click on the collapse button on the left to close it. It gets you space for other stuff. Now's the time to remind that you can resize the entire GUI by dragging the bottom right corner. And it nicely changes the instrument GUIs as well. Cool, huh? You can make it as big as you need. And if the instrument selector is too small for you, click settings and select style, and there you can change the font sizes and other visual properties. Back to the instruments. There's a handy standard, which will nicely speed up using the instruments. Most of them have three tabs. First, the graphical tab specific to the instrument, named Generator, Main, Piano, or something like that. Then there are Effects, which contains various effects the instrument designer found to be useful with the instrument. And finally, there's the Globals tab, which is almost identical for most instruments. There are the Velocity Response, Volume, Tuning, MPE, and other essential settings, and these have a handy lock next to them so that you can set it up and it won't change anymore when you browse presets and even different instruments. That's all you need to know about instruments for now. How about the rest of the M Sound Factory window? On top, there are the global presets. There are already over a thousand presets, but these do not come up with any specific GUI, so these are really just settings. And here, you can save your favourite sounds, for example, or use it when you start designing your own sounds. Random button creates completely random settings for the current instrument. Edit button gets you to the edit screen where you can control every aspect of the sound, but that's for later. The reproductor icon just plays a sound. It's like hitting a key. It may get useful to preview some instruments without a controller. Panic button resets the sound engine. It gets handy if you run into some zombie notes or any other problem. As its name suggests, use it if you panic. MIDI button opens the MIDI settings. Here you can configure your MIDI controller so that you can use all the instruments effectively. And the most handy way is using the main controllers tab. Here you learn the faders and knobs of your controller. Simply click learn and touch a control on your MIDI device. then save it as a preset for the future.
As you can see on the Controllers tab, instruments map these main controllers to some of their controls. So no matter which instrument you choose, your MIDI controller will work with it and change parameters the instrument designer chose to be worth it. Multi-core makes the M Sound Factory use multiple cores of your CPU. In most cases, it should speed up the processing when playing more than one note at the same time. You can always just try disabling it to check if it really helps. The remaining buttons on the right just give you access to some global settings and features. There are two more handy toolbars on the right. First, there are meters, which are pretty self-explanatory. But then there's the plugin toolbar. Most Melda plugins have that. Let's take it from the top. First, there's the upsampling, designed to improve the audio quality at the cost of higher CPU usage. While M Sound Factory is naturally designed to sound nearly analog, if you have a fast computer, here you can improve the audio quality by up to a staggering 1024 times ratio. If you ask me, it's way over the top, but if you are an analog junkie, you may enjoy having the possibility. Set button is cool, mostly for sound design, but it can get handy even on the easy screen. When you click it, it will play some performance on the background and set the output gain so that the loudness of the current settings are pretty much the same as with other instruments. Safety limiter makes sure the output won't exceed the zero decibel full scale limit. While it is not really necessary in the digital domain, it may get handy as a safety precaution when doing something more creative. A to H presets are extremely handy as these let you store snapshots of the settings, up to eight of them. Let's face it, you never know what sound is the right one until you try a few more. Below there are features to easily switch between the A to H presets and even morph between them. The copy and paste buttons let you copy the settings between the A to H slots and even between multiple M Sound Factory instances. Undo and redo buttons, self-explanatory. And finally, there's the extremely powerful appreciator, which may get handy for most sounds. Well, that's all for now. You survived the main tutorial, and now you can efficiently use M Sound Factory, your new go-to instrument.